Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking the video out. I want to take a look at Isotope RX11 and Logic Pro and how we can interface between the two. Now, previously I did a video on RX9 and using Logic Pro. And there's some similarities, but there's also some kind of expanded workflows within RX11 that are really going to help us, especially when dealing with stereo files and, and such like. So first off, I want to show you exactly how you can make it so that RX11 is your default audio external editor. So you can just press one shortcut and open up the selected audio file straight into RX and then send it back again. It's super simple. Let's just take a look at that now and then we'll kind of expand upon this. So I want to make it so that I can just select a region, press a key command and it opens in RX11. That's, that's the dream, right? So it's dead simple. All we need to do, go up to Logic Pro at the top, go to settings, and then we'll go to audio. You'll see all my audio settings. And what I want to do is go into file editor just here. Click on file editor, and it's your external sample editor. You'll see I've currently got it set to RX11, but just it, for the sake of showing, let's see, uh, see if we can choose it. Let's go to choose. And then I'm just going to scroll down to I for isotope. You can see I've got eight, nine, 10, 11. Let's just check 11 and go to choose. Now, the default key command for this is Shift and W. Now, if you need to set that up because you've got it set to something else, then you can just set that up in your key commands by going up to Logic Pro and key commands, edit assignments, and you can open up external, open external editor. Here we go. And you can go learn by key label and press Shift W and it will automatically assign it for you. But it's already done for me, which is great. So what I want to do now is actually open it up in RX11 and see what features we can, can utilize there. So I've got a mono guitar track and a stereo guitar track. These were both recorded at the same time, which is going to be important in a moment. Let's go to our stereo one for a second. Press Shift and W. Hey, presto, it's in RX11. Now you'll see here that it looks a little bit weird. Instead of having left and right, we've got mono and stereo. So mono channel is on the top, stereo channel is on the bottom. That's because in view, I've got channel mode set to mid side. This is new in RX11. It's a new way of seeing stuff basically, which is great for stereo recordings. If I go to left and right, then we'll see that stuff is more or less the same on the left channel as it is on the right channel. And we can kind of confirm that by going to view and channel mode and mid side. And we'll see that the majority of the stuff is in the mid channel and there's a little bit in the stereo channel. So we can just play that back and kind of confirm that it does sound a little bit mono. Okay, so what if we want to increase the stereo spread of this if we want to turn up the side channels well we can just select the side channel on its own we can go over to gain and let's give that a healthy i don't know 8 db boost let's go to render and we've just boosted up the side channel so that when we listen to it back if we select both the channels we're a little bit more stereo if we go to our history to our initial state we can hear it how it was before And now we've got a bit more of a spread on there. We can, of course, go crazy and we can bring that up a few times and make it super, super, super stereo. Mono version or mono-ish. Very wide. So that's all well and good, but how do we get it out of RX and back into Logic? Well, it's a simple key command, but it's also in the file menu as well. So go up to file and we go to overwrite original file. Now the key command for this is option or alt command and S. And I typically have that under my fingers a lot when I'm using this. So I'm just going to go option command and S. And you'll see there that the small dot kind of went away, which means that we're not in like a working version. There are changes that have been made and now we've saved those changes. Let's jump back to Logic and the overview updates. That means that we've essentially done something to it. We've changed it externally. Okay, so this is cool. We can do that. We can fly stuff out of Logic into RX and back again. But something that I quite like to do is to work on multiple tracks at the same time. Let's say you've got a multi-mic drum kit and you've got a noise. Well, you want to get rid of it on all the channels at the same time. And this is not something new to RX11, but I don't feel like people really know about this enough. So we've got the 
mono mic, which is of the same recording recorded at the same time. And this is really important. If we press that key command again, shift W, bring that into RX. Well, we can see a few things here. First of all, I've got a bit of a, a high pitched whine on here, which I'm not going to worry about for the, for the sake of this, but we can see that these two are the same. They've been recorded essentially at the same time. So that's where it starts. And then this one it is the same point. If we go up to this little button here, which is the composite view, then this allows us to take a look at both files at the same time. So we've got the kind of the stereo channel and the mono channel in there in one. And this is really, really handy if you want to edit a load of multi-mic stuff. In this instance, we've got an acoustic guitar. It could be a multi-mic drum kit. It could be a guitar amp. So you've got two microphones on the same guitar amp and you want to get rid of the amp noise, you know, using the guitar and denoise module. You can do that. It's super easy. And what's more, any changes that you make to this then have their own undo history. So if you're not too familiar with the undo history kind of feature in RX, down the bottom here, we can change any, any history. We can go back a step or whatever we want to do. So let's say, I don't know, for the sake of argument, let's just go to gain. Let's just turn something up or down. Let's turn a note up or down by a considerable amount. Let's go for this one. Doesn't matter. We're just going crazy. Let's render it. Okay. So when we bring that back out of the composite view into our normal view, we can see that it's been done on the stereo track and it's been done on the, what we're kind of calling the mono track. But if we go to undo in the mono track, it doesn't change things in the stereo track. They're completely separate, two disparate tracks that we can work on in a separate way. So then we can do the same thing. We can just hit the option command and S uh, on the stereo track, and we can do it on this one. If we make it so there's actually a change, go back into logic, and we can see that that little note has been taken out of both of them, but you've got undo history for each of them, which is really, really helpful. Composite view is not new to RX 11, mid side mode is, and that's just a really simple way of working with Logic Pro and RX 11, flying stuff out, bringing stuff back in again, and helping your restoration kind of workflow be a lot smoother. There is one thing I want to add to this though, because typically when you're selecting a region, if you just select this region that we've just worked on, press shift W, it's going to take the entire region. Well, if this is just a part of the file, say this is just 30 seconds in like an eight minute file. Well, RX is just going to look at the entire eight minutes, which sometimes we don't actually want. So what we can do to kind of counteract that, if we just draw a box over the section that we want to work on, it's not going to be this bit, but let's say it is. Let's just control and click. And we can go to convert to new audio files. Now it's in my um, most used because I use that an awful lot, but it's actually in convert here as well. Um, so convert to new audio files. So if I just click that and then it's going to go into my kind of session folder and replace that, then what it's going to do is kind of increment. So it's going to turn it from guitar stereo two to 2.2 .2 underscore one. You can name it whatever you want. Importantly though, what that's going to do is it's going to make it so it doesn't open the entire file. If I just select this bit that we've just isolated now, press our handy key command shift W, it's only opening the bit that's there. If I go into this one though, the one that was there before and open that, it's still got everything. It's still got the original bit because it's still part of the original file, still part of the original region. Typically when I'm using this, I'm doing it for, I don't know, podcasts maybe, and it's an hour long podcast. I don't want RX to open up the entire file. I just want to go into that one bit where there's an issue and just amend that. So this is really, really handy. I don't often use the shortcut because it's always in my most used. Uh, so just control click, convert to new audio files, um, go to convert and you can just do it from there. But it's option command F if you do want to use the shortcut. I hope it's been useful for you. I'll see you again soon. Take care.